We have a wonderful stable of young, very capable pastors of which this young man is doing a wonderful job in leading our youth ministry and our young adults ministry. You give some love to Caleb Stoba. He's going to bring you a word today. It's good when we love you. Thanks, son. Get my uh, fancy technology opened up here. Welcome, everyone, to uh, Bob's class. You're dismissed. Yeah. Forgot about that. Class, Thank yeah. you, Bob. Class, yeah. Middle school. Yep. Uh, anyways, welcome to uh, Howe County National Holiday of Deer, Deer Season, Season Sunday. <laughs> and that's why there's a few people missing. <laughs> so it was not. It was not. Jesus has not come back. Um, we're praying for that every day, right? But Jesus has not made it back here yet. So, <laughs> so anyways, turn to your neighbor and say, I'm thankful you're not in the woods. I'm thankful you're not in the woods. There we go. You got to start, you got to start a West Side Sunday with a, some, some, some kind of turn, your, turn to your neighbor and say. So anyways, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about gratitude and what gratitude is. But I want to start with Romans chapter 8, verse 1 and 2. And, uh. It says, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life. Yeah. We've been in the spirit of life series so far. And the yeah. law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ yes. Jesus. Yes. From the law of sin and death. And so that, that's kind of the baseline of everything we've been on. That law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus. He's your salvation. So we just came through the, the truth and grace. And what is truth? Well, truth is truth, period. No ands, ifs, or buts about it. Truth is truth. But grace in a general context yes. is God's favor towards you. That's right. God's favor toward the unworthy. I'm not worthy of it. I don't know if you're worthy of it or not, but I know I'm not. So grace is God's favor towards you. Now, gratitude is your response to that. Gratitude is your gift to God. What are you going to do back to God because he's done something for you? Right. And so what did God give you? Did God give you something? Because I know he's given me everything. Yeah, come on. Has God given you something? And if he's given you something, what are you going to do with it? And then how are you going to show that gratitude back? That's the whole nutshell of what we're on today. So we're getting close to holiday season, right? We're almost to Thanksgiving. And Americans tend to skip Thanksgiving and be like, it's almost Christmas time. But we miss out on Thanksgiving. We miss out on what Thanksgiving is. We miss out on the whole season of being thankful. But being thankful shouldn't just be a season, right? It should be the third week of July and the second week of February and the fourth week of October. You know, it should be every, every time that we wake up should be a time of Thanksgiving. And so uh, this last week, we just went through what would be the eighth anniversary of the, from when I uh, was nearly tragically hurt, um, had a safe fall on me, crushed my legs. And so November 7th was my, that's my anniversary. That's my, uh, yeah. my day of Thanksgiving that I, I mark every year. My family has marked that year since the day it happened, or that day since the day that it happened. And so... It's been eight years since uh, the enemy tried to take me out. God had bigger plans. And so uh, what am I thankful for and what am I grateful for? I'm, I'm thankful that I'm here. I'm alive. I'm thankful that I've got a leg. I'm thankful that I can walk. I'm thankful for good doctors. Yes. Thankful for good therapists. Yes. Thankful for my family. Yeah. And guess what? I got a new family out of it. I got my own family. Yeah. Because if that... At that point, that was, that was my day that I trademarked. That was the day that God changed the trajectory of my life. That was the day that everything, everything worked in the right direction, even though it looked like it was crushing. impossible. It was literally crushing. Yeah. And so what am I thankful for? I'm thankful for that. But here's the deal. You don't have to have some big miraculous story to be yeah. grateful or That's thankful. Right. Yeah. You don't have to have some big, something bad that happened to you in order to be thankful that you came out of it. Right. Now, we've all walked through the lows, the valleys. We've all walked on the mountaintops. Yeah. But the thing is, what are you grateful for? Mm -hmm. What has God done for you? 
I think we've all got a lot to be grateful for. And so how do we, how do we express that gratitude? Mm -hmm. So we're going to, um, since gratitude is our response, mm -hmm. um, I didn't share this earlier, but I want to share it now. So what, um, any guys that are married in the room, do you remember when you proposed? Uh -huh. <laughs> so I remember this um, very much so, like it, yesterday, but here's the deal. So we picked out the ring, you know, got that whole deal out of the way and got the ring that she wanted. We had all this lined up. But how many of you remember checking your pocket every 30 seconds? Like, do I still have the ring? You know, because I, I can remember. So I had a jacket on. And I had the ring in my coat pocket. And so it's getting close to time. Like, you're trying to make sure everything's perfect. You know, you're going through everything. And then you're like, is it still there? You just spent a lot of money on this, right? The prized possession. You know, oh, is it still there? Okay, you're still there. Now, granted, no, nobody has came and taken it out of your pocket. Nobody has removed it. And every 30 seconds, every 10, you're like, oh, is it? Yep, okay, we're still there. You're going about your business. Five seconds, oh, yeah, it's still there. Okay. <laughs> Why can we not do that when it comes to our gratitude and our worship? Why are we not constantly thinking about what we're grateful for and what we're thankful for? Because something, if we can physically see that prized possession, right, that you're fixing to propose to your soon-to-be wife, the woman you've prayed for, the woman you love, and then you're like, I hope I don't lose this thing, right? And you continually check for it because it's something physical you can see. What about the things that God's done for you that nobody else can see but you know? Surely you can check on those. Surely you can, you can continually think about those in every moment that comes across your mind, right? Continually think about them. Continually be grateful for them. Continue to be thankful for them. So since gratitude is our response to God's grace, there's one thing that God has called you to, each and every one of you, and that's to worship. And worship is so much bigger than what goes on on this stage, what goes on right. in here during worship service, right? right? Worship is so much more than music. It's more than a guitar, a bass, a set of drums, some vocals, a piano, and a cool lead line, and an electric guitar. Like, it's so much cooler than that. It's so much more than that. It's more than just words that you sing. See, God, that we're going to dig into this a little bit about what worship is. I want you to go to um, Ephesians 6, 18, and 19. And then we're going to go backwards a little bit. So Ephesians 6, 18 and 19. Pray in the spirit on all occasions, all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. And we go on here, and this is somewhat for me in this time. It says, pray for also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel. And so, God, we come to you right now, and I just I pray that these words that are going to come out of my mouth, God, that they are your words, they're not mine, that you would pour out this spirit of gratitude in this place, God, and that you would pour your words out through me right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. So let's go back to Ephesians 5, 18, and it says, um, we're, the first part says don't get drunk with wine, but we're going to skip that part for now because it we does not have context to this. You guys can take what you want out of that one. It says, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. So there's our songs, right? Making melody to the Lord with your heart. Giving thanks always for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Giving thanks always. Let's go to Hebrews 12, 28. It says, Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And thus, let us offer, a, offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe. So what is that acceptable worship that we have to offer to God? It's not, music is acceptable worship. God has already stated that in the previous, you know, be filled with the spirit addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. So song is acceptable worship, but there's more there because we're not all vocally gifted. We're not all musically gifted. Like, 
I'm not vocally gifted. I can make my fingers work on a guitar a little bit, but sometimes that's very minute, and I have to really work at that one. But each and every one of you have a gift that is so much more than music. So there's more to worship than music because he hasn't made each and every one of us the same. So there's got to be more there, right? So let's go to Hebrews 13, 15 through 16. So through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise. So there's once again, praise, right? The fruit of the lips that openly profess his name. Let's go on here. And do not forget to do good. There's a lot of that lacking in the world right now, right? To do good and to share with others. For with such sacrifices, God is pleased. Well, right there, if God's pleased, I want to do it, right? Can we agree on that one? If God yeah. says it, that we're supposed to do it or that he's pleased, I want to do it. Yeah. So what does it mean when it says share with others? So that share with others is not just like, oh, here you go. Here's your 20 bucks. Let me share this with you. Oh, or here, you can borrow my pickup for a while or whatever. There's more to sharing than physical things. Sharing, and in this context, um, it's talking about spending time with other people. <laughs> Share with others. So we all, everything in today's society is caught up in material things, right? But what about our time? What about our time? Maybe all God's asking us to do there when share with others is to share some time with some people. When's the last time you sit down with some close friends? Or when's the last time you spent some time with your family? Like real time, not like, oh, I got to hurry in, eat supper, and we're going to play with the kids for five minutes and go to bed. Like when's the last time you really spent some time with them that you invested in your family and that you focused on your family and not focused on your phone? That's big in society right now. Easy for me to do. Why do you think I'm preaching it? Because I'm guilty of it. It's transparency right there. We all have done it at some point. If you've got a smartphone, you've probably focused on your phone. So... Can we all agree on something here? God is all love. Yes. God is all grace. Yes. And God is all powerful. Yes, he is. Okay, so if we can agree on that, why do we not want to please him? So we're going to take this from all the way back to Genesis. We might go Genesis to Revelation here. We'll just see how long we want to go. So Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. So by faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous. Who here wants to be righteous? We all strive to be that, right? And righteous isn't this big, scary word that I'm better than you. Righteous is, I'm in right standing with the Father. And so God commending him by accepting his gifts, and through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. How, why, how does he still speak? Because of the sacrifice that he made. The sacrifice that he made was pleasing to God. Now, Cain didn't bring his best, did he? Abel brought his best. And so, if you go back to Genesis 3, why is Abel giving a sacrifice? Because God gave a sacrifice first. In Genesis 3, we, uh, God made the very first sacrifice. So, if you go down to verse uh, 21, in chapter 3 of Genesis, and we don't have to go there, I'll just read it. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. Well, it's kind of hard to make skin without an animal. It's kind of hard to make garments right. without something right. dying that had the skin on it. So therefore, something had to die. So therefore, God made the first sacrifice. God made the first sacrifice, the first offering in order to clothe Adam and Eve. So what happens? Abel offers a sacrifice. So this isn't just you and this generation. This is a generational thing. Because God made an offering and sacrifice to Adam and Eve, and then you also see Abel making an adequate sacrifice back to the Father. And so what did Abel made a response, right? In order for there to be two parties in a conversation, we normally have to talk back and forth, right? And so I always use conversation because it's easy because we can hear each other, right? And so when it comes to this and the response, 
he made the response back to God because he was grateful and thankful for what God had done and saved his mom and dad. And now he was getting to be here, right? And so then he is thankful and grateful for that. So he makes a sacrifice, a physical living sacrifice. And so we read Hebrews 13, 15, and 16. So let's go back there. And the third word says, therefore. So when you read a therefore in scripture, what do we do? We see why in the world it's there for. So let's go back to um, Hebrews 13, 11 through 14. So we're going to go back about four or five verses here. So it says, The high priest carries the blood of animals into the most holy place as a sin offering, but the bodies are burned outside the camp. So this is in the NIV. It's a little easier to understand. And so Jesus also suffered outside the city gate to make the people holy through his own body. So I want you to understand the context of what's going on here. So in, the, in, in Leviticus 4, God gives Moses the law of how to sacrifice animals. And, and it's, a, it's a little different than, the, uh, than what Abel, Cain and Abel were doing there. But in Leviticus 4, he gives them the law um, of how it's supposed to be done. And so that blood was carried into the most holy place as a sin offering. That blood was pure, right? And so the bodies are burned outside the camp. So the bodies aren't burnt in the same place that the blood is going. The bodies are going outside the camp. And the direct parallel here, so Jesus also suffered outside the city gate. Jesus had to carry his cross up Golgotha Hill. And he died on a cross for you. But here's the deal. He didn't do that in the city. He had to go outside the gates because it's a direct parallel to the way the sacrifice was made because God told him the way it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be in a ceremonial clean place outside the camp. And so therefore Jesus had to go outside the camp. And if you read on in verse 13, let us then go to him outside the camp, bearing the disgrace he bore. So, What's that mean? So I just, we just uh, gutted a deer last night. I don't know if you've ever done that before, but it ain't real clean. It's kind of nasty a little bit. But here's the deal. Animals that are dead and are being burned are not clean, right? Okay, we've got that clear out of the water. So this blood is being carried and they carry these bodies of these animals that they were sacrificing to a ceremonial clean place outside the camp. But you can't tell me that it didn't stink and it wasn't nasty and was gross, right? Because there's burning animals. It all sounds gross. You're like, why in the world are we talking about this, right? So here's the deal. It's a direct parallel to Jesus. It's a direct parallel to Jesus. And so let us then go to him outside the camp bearing the disgrace he bore. For, there, for here we do not have an enduring city. We're looking for the city that's to come. So you've got to go outside the gate where it's nasty, stinks, it's a mess. And that's where you've got to meet Jesus because that's what it took for us to be holy. That's what it took for you to be holy. See, holy isn't this grand term that I am better than thou. Holy is just simply a term that needs to be used for where we are with Jesus. Are we made holy because Jesus Christ died for me? Yes. That's all that holy should be because I say all, it's, it's a big term, right? Society is made holy into this. Well, you're holy, so therefore you think you're better than me. And so therefore somebody gets offended, right? Everything's woke society. I'm offended. Well, I'm sorry. I'm going to offend you because Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, and he made me holy because of his blood. And that's just the truth of it. And so the deal is you have a choice to make a response to what God has done for you. You have a choice to respond to what God's done for you. And so let's go to Hebrews 9. We're going to talk a little bit about the mercy seat 
And then I have a little artwork to show you. So Hebrews 9, chapter 1. Now the first covenant had regulations for worship and also an earthly sanctuary. A tabernacle was set up in its first room where the lamp stand on the table with its consecrated bread. This was called the holy place. Behind the second curtain was a room called the most holy place, which had the golden altar of incense and the gold covered ark of the covenant. This ark contained the gold jar of manna, Aaron's staff that had budded, and the stone tablets of the covenant. Above the ark were the cherubim of the glory, overshadowing the atonement cover. We cannot discuss these things in detail, but let's read that in the ESV. That was in the NIV, and I don't know how I got switched there, but I did. So the ESV, in verse 5, above it were the cherubim of glory overshadowing the mercy seat. So what is the mercy seat? Go down to verse um, 11. Blood of Christ. Verse 11 of chapter 9. But when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy places, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood thus securing an eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of defiled persons was the, with the ashes of a heifer sanctify for the purification of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, yes. who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And so I've got a little drawing here to show you. We're going old school with the old whiteboard. And so, our sacrifice starts at the mercy seat. And so, our worship starts at the mercy seat. So we're going to write that at the bottom, and I'll show you this in just a second. So, if gratitude is simply, just, it's, it's really the way that we worship, then worship is... More than music, right? We got that. So your worship is your response to what God has given you. And it starts at that mercy seat and takes you to righteousness. So the second one is righteousness. And that righteousness means that you got adopted. You're adopted into the family. So we're going to write that down here. And once you get adopted, it's like a new birth, right? You're born again. It's a new birth. And that new birth, once you receive Jesus Christ and you grow a little bit, you get filled with the Spirit, right? Who wants to be filled with the Spirit? So that's the next step to how we worship. And once you are filled with the Spirit, guess what? You start to realize what God has really gifted you with. So, well, that's not a G. So, you realize what your gifts are. Who has gifts in here? Every one of your hands should be in the air. Because God has gifted you with something that nobody else has. And I don't know what it is. And maybe you haven't found the fullness of it yet. Or maybe you went and stuck it in the closet. But God has given you a gift. Are you using it to worship with? The next thing, once you realize what your gifts are, you learn what your purpose is. Once you find your purpose, guess what you find? Once you've got Jesus through all this, you realize what truth really is. And that truth gives you hope. And that hope lasts forever. So, I'm going to show you this here. So, it's literally, I just wrote them down, right? But guess what? When you write these down, and the visual of this is actually pretty cool. So when you do this right here, it finally makes sense. So you start down here, everything leads to your worship at the top. That right there is how you worship. It starts at the mercy seat. 
gives you purpose, truth, hope, and it goes on forever. That's how you express your gratitude. That's how you express your gratitude, and that's the way that you worship. And so I know you've all went through something hard in your life. That was your valley, and you have probably all rode on the mountaintop at some point. But everywhere that you worship, there's an altar. Everywhere worship is in anything, there's an altar. So even probably in all these other religions, there's probably some kind of altar, but that's all fake stuff. I'm telling you the real stuff today. Every time in the Old Testament that there was worship, there was an altar. And what is an altar? Right. It's simply just a memorial. It's simply a remembering place. It's simply a place that they will, you know, they were sacrificing animals on an altar. But the main altar that I always run across that I remember is when they crossed the Jordan River. They stacked up their 12 stones. Here's the deal. That was a memorial. I have a date in my life that I set as my altar. And that was November 7th, 2015. And that's the day that the enemy tried to wipe me out, right? But here's the deal. God had a bigger plan. God redirected everything in my life. And I'm going to remember that day till the day that I die. And that day will probably be passed on down the rest of my family if, if it goes that way or if Jesus doesn't come back, right? But I establish an altar. And then all my sacrifices are made based around that. And so what is God asking us to lay down on our altar? What is God asking us to lay down on our altar in order to worship him and send that gratitude back to him that he deserves? See, the word gratitude is really just a gracious attitude. You know, I titled this attitude of gratitude, but like just because it kind of rhymes is really the only reason I said that. It, it's already combined in one word of gratitude. A gracious attitude. Grateful, thankful, right? So what is God asking us to lay down on our altar? So I've got four things here that I think we need to probably lay down on an altar. And not all four of them that you have to lay down. Not all four. You don't have to lay any of them down. That's between you and God. You know, I heard uh, Louis Giglio say the other day that he, he doesn't convince anybody of anything. He's just there to persuade. So I can't convince you of anything. I can persuade you to want to convince yourself. But until you believe it for yourself, me standing here teaching this to you doesn't really help you out any until you realize what you're convinced of. So I'm convinced that Jesus Christ went outside the camp and died on a cross, and we're supposed to meet him there. And so what are you laying down on your altar? So the first thing is me and mine. How many here's me and mine, me and mine, right? Maybe that needs to be laid down on the altar so that it transforms to you and yours. And when you say you and yours, that's you and yours, God. If you continually lay this down on the altar and you're continually grateful for what God has done for you, what he's given you, then me and mine and everything that I want becomes you and yours, God. It becomes you and yours. And that should be constant. How many times do, I, do we look back and realize, well, I was being selfish, worried about me and mine, right? The second one is gifts and time. We're all gifted. Don't miss out on that. Every one of you's got a gift. Are you using it to worship God with? Like I said, worship is so much more than just music. We've classified it as music. We've classified it as singing songs. Worship is so much more than that. So much more. What gifts has he given you and what are you doing with them? How can you worship using the gift that he's given you? What about that time that we mentioned earlier? What about that time we mentioned? That's a hard one to give up right now, isn't it? It's like they had 24 hours back in the day and they had all kinds of time to do stuff. Now we can't even go see our family for an hour. You know, like we've got so busy in everything that we do. Maybe you just need to lay down a little bit of time to spend with God. Maybe you need to lay down a little bit of time to spend with your family. 
The third one is goods and goals. Everything in today's world has taught you, you just need all the goods, don't you? We just got to have all the goods, get all the stuff. Maybe you can bring him something that would be a resource to help him. You know, I don't know what that is. That's up to you guys. It's all based around gratitude and your goals. That's, that's a rough one. I don't want to give up my goals. I don't want to give up what I have in front of me. Here's the deal. You're not giving them up. You're giving them to God. Like, here's the deal. God, I've, here's what I want to do, God. Here's the goals that I'm striving to achieve. Now, I really pray that you let me go through with them, right? Here's what I want to achieve, but I'm giving it to you. It's not me and mine anymore. It's you and yours, and he's going to multiply that. It's a, it's a game of multiplication. It's not addition. God works with multiplication. So I want me and mine to become you and yours so that this can be multiplied. And so that my goals that I want to achieve, maybe it'll be far more than I can ever imagine. Far more than I can ever imagine. Are you willing to lay any of this stuff down? The fourth one is highs and lows. Highs and lows. How many of you gone through a high? You had a mountaintop experience. You just kind of cruised on the mountain. And guess what? We probably didn't show God near as much gratitude as he deserves while we was up there. How many of you went through a low valley? It's hard. It's rough. Stunk. Out there with the sacrifices. You had to make a sacrifice just to get back up the hill, right? Miss, if you want to go ahead and come. See, worshiping on the mountain and worshiping on the, in the valley look totally different. They look totally different. Yes. We were at a conference a couple years ago. Marsha, I think you were there. They were talking about midnight worship. The darkest hour. The darkest time. And the darkest time in our life is a certain type of worship. It's a certain type of worship that we give God. Because at that point, we're crying out, we've got to have help. I've got to have help. And that mountaintop is, God, I praise you for what you're doing. I praise you for all that you're doing. I praise you for who you are. And I'm so thankful for what you've done for me. Now, here's the deal. When it comes to a response, we've given him response, but what about the rewards? If we just give, 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 or if you just receive, 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 like who likes to get gifts? Like I like Christmas, right? Who likes Christmas? You guys like Christmas? Yeah, we like to get gifts, don't we? But what do you do around Christmas time? You probably give some gifts too. See, it, it works both ways. If you just continually receive gifts and you continually receive gifts and you never give anything back, then are you either being selfish or you're just trying to bounce off of everybody's blessings, but you're really not walking in what God has called us to when it comes to everything because God has called us to give gifts and to receive because God gave you the ultimate gift. Now, what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? See, the rewards are the blessings that we get to be grateful for. And it starts this cycle. And God gives us Whatever we've got, he gives you stuff, maybe. I don't know if it's stuff, but maybe he walks you through a hard time. Maybe he walks you through the valley. Maybe he lets you cruise on the mountaintop. But I guarantee you, he's going to bless you. God is a God of blessing. He is definitely a God of blessing. He's not, a, he's not just a God that I want you to give me all this gratitude. Give me all this worship. And I'm just going to sit here and soak it all in. No, he wants the gratitude so that he can bless you. He wants it so he can bless you. And see, that starts a growth period when you start to do that. Because I talked about multiplication a while ago. Whenever you, whenever you start to give God gratitude back for the offering and sacrifice that he's given you, and you start to give his gratitude back to him, then you grow a little bit. 
and then he blesses you. And then he blesses you and you give him some more gratitude because you're thankful for that blessing. And I guarantee you, he'll give you, give you blessing that's multiplied. And you give him some more gratitude. He's going to bless you some more. And it becomes multiplied. Maybe even sevenfold. Maybe you get to be up there with Job. And you get to receive all this blessing. But it doesn't come without a sacrifice. And sacrifice takes pain. See, there's so many, there's so many parallels. If you really wanted to break down all the parallels in Scripture. But this one parallel that we talked about is enough of the sacrifice that was carried outside the camp. The blood was carried into the most holy place. The sacrifices, the, the bodies are carried out to be burned. If that's enough sacrifice to cover their sins in, surely the blood of Jesus Christ is enough to cover our sins now. And surely we can give him some gratitude and some grace back that direction. We can give him some praise. So, Colossians 3.17. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So I told our kids at youth the other night, I said, it, it doesn't have to, not every single conversation that you have has to be about Jesus. It's okay that you have conversations about football and basketball and whatever else you want to have conversations about. But everything you do should point whoever's watching to Jesus. Should point whoever's watching to Jesus because each and every one of you are influencers. You know, influencers is this big term going around right now in our kids. Like they want to be a TikTok influencer or Instagram or whatever they, all, all the social media stuff. They want to be these influencers. They're already an influencer. Everybody is watching you at some point. Somebody's watching you. Everybody's being watched. We, everybody pays attention. God made us with brains and we pay attention. So you are an influencer and you are influencing somebody. And are they seeing you giving God any gratitude? Or are you just sulking in whatever you're going through? See, let's go to Micah 6, 8. And this is pretty plain and straightforward. It's, it says, what does God require of you? He's told you, O oh man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? Act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. The ESV here, it says to love kindness. To love kindness. That's all he requires of us. He's requiring you to be kind, love kindness, do justice. Guess what? It says he requires you to walk with him humbly. Doesn't mean we walk like, oh, there's God. I'm just gonna, just gonna walk over here. Oh, God, yeah, get back, get back over here. I'm just going to walk. I'm going to walk over here where I can still kind of do my own thing. I don't have to give all this sacrifice junk, you know, like I don't have to go through any pain. But when I really want, where I'm really going through the, the trial, I just kind of want to jump back on board over here. If you ever jump off a ship, you're probably not getting back on it. You're probably stuck off of it. Sorry about you. The shark's just going to have lunch, I guess. <laughs> But that's the truth of it. Like, we're supposed to walk humbly with your God. And it says it's required in here. And when you do those three things, it says there, when you love justice, or when you act justly, love mercy, walk humbly, that's what brings you life. That's what brings you life. We're in this series about the spirit of life. 
We're not in this life just to go through the motions, just to wake up every morning, go to work, go home, eat supper, go to bed. How many of us have done that? Maybe for a long time. Maybe God's given you a gift that because everyone else is going and doing this, you just kind of go through the motions and you just go to work. Provide for your family. Eat, sleep, wake up, work, repeat, right? Maybe he's giving you a gift and you just stuck it in the closet. Pull it out of the closet. Show some gratitude back to him for what he's given you. Worship him with what he's given you. He gave you that for a reason. He gave you that for a reason. You guys can go ahead and stand if you'd like to. So I want to show you one more thing about our highs and lows. So I don't know if you've seen it. Um, most of you probably have. But it's a, it's just kind of a logo, but it's pretty simple. And it's just got a G. It's got a greater sign. All you math geeks know what I'm talking about. God is greater than our ups and our downs. And I encourage you, like, go buy a t-shirt with that. It's probably going to a good cause. And guess what? Everybody's going to ask you, what in the world does that mean? Yeah. When you have a G is, G is greater than up and down? Yeah. Like, what is G? That's God. Yeah. God is greater than your ups and downs. He's greater than your highs and lows, and he's the one that's going to walk you through all of that. Surely the least we can do is give him a little bit of gratitude, right? Or maybe the least we can do is give him all the gratitude. Maybe it doesn't just have to be a little bit. Maybe we can give him a lot of gratitude. See, our Christian walk is kind of like Thanksgiving. A lot of times we just use it when we need it. That one time, like, oh, this is what we do. We're thankful during Thanksgiving. And then the other 11 months, we're just kind of riding through the motion until we get back to eat some turkey and taters. But maybe we need to be in that season of Thanksgiving. Maybe we can eat turkey and taters every day. I'd be cool with that. Meat and taters kind of guy, right? But whatever you do, do it in giving thanks to God the Father through Jesus. God, we just come to you right now and I thank you so much for your word. I thank you for showing us and helping us to realize that you sent us the sacrifice first and ours is just a response. Ours is just a response of worship back to you, God. just pray right now that we would search our hearts, God, that if we haven't given God the gratitude that we haven't given you the gratitude that you deserve, that, that we would simply just do so. It's just an act. We just have to take the step and do it. I just pray that we check our hearts, God, for that worship, that we're not really worshiping something else. And we're just going through the motions over here. I thank you for all that you are. I thank you for who you are. I thank you for all the blessings you have given me and all the blessings I know you've given the ones in this room. You are a God of blessing. All you require is us to give you some worship and give you some gratitude back. All you want us to do is to walk with you. I just pray that we don't leave here and, and, and nothing changes. We go back to living this life of 
no gratitude and going through the motions every day and not using what God's given us and not using it to worship you and to praise you. See, gratitude brings life. And it may not feel like it at the time because you might be having to give a sacrifice up to give some gratitude. It may not feel like it, but that sacrifice is what brings life. Jesus Christ was the ultimate sacrifice and he gave us everlasting life forever. Forever. It's at the very top of our worship is forever. Use your gifts. Find your purpose. Find the truth. Receive the hope and do it forever. Until we understand what worship is and how we can worship ourselves, like what what is our goal? Or why are we trying to achieve heaven if we don't want to worship? Because like that's all I want to do when I get there. Like he's worthy to worship. He's worthy to worship. Like that's, we're going to heaven to praise God because he brought us out of hell. He brought us salvation through an ultimate sacrifice. Through an ultimate sacrifice that none of us could pay. None of you could pay it. Let's give him some gratitude. God, we just praise you for who you are. We praise you for what you've done. We praise you for what you're going to do. And we just praise you that we're here today. And even if all you've got is a hallelujah, if all you got is a hallelujah, let's give it to him. God, I praise you. just give him a little bit of gratitude for just a couple minutes here. Even if it's gratitude of your heart, just give him some gratitude. So we're grateful today. We're thankful for today for receiving a kingdom that is unshakable. It says it cannot be shaken in Hebrews chapter 12. Each and every one of you get to receive that kingdom. Let's make some sacrifices for the one that saved us. Let's be grateful for the one that saved us. God, you're amazing. I thank you for that. I thank you for the love you show us. I thank you for the blessing that's going to come. Thank you for the growth that's going to come. Yes. Thank you for giving us the ability to praise you. It's what you made us for is to give you some worship back, God, for the offering that you made for us. Yeah. We're made to worship. Let's use our gifts to worship. Love you so much, in Jesus' name, amen.